What's happening? Chef Greg here. Uh, chef here at uh, Urban Roots Brewery and Smokehouse. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm a huge uh, book enthusiast, especially cookbook enthusiast. Um, you know, I uh, went to culinary school for a hot second, but majority of my education is through these books and through the kitchen. Um, so I'm just gonna share a couple of books that are important to me and I've learned a lot from, got a lot of inspiration from. Um, so I'm gonna start with <clears throat> uh, Hugo Ortega's uh, Street Food of Mexico. So the reason why um, this book is so dope is um, it's the first time I've opened a uh, Mexican food cookbook and been surprised by what I found, um, just the uniqueness of it. Um, it's very regional. It has a lot of uh, very quote unquote authentic uh, food. Um, and it's super approachable. It breaks it down really easy. Great recipe, really straightforward. Next, uh, one of my first cook cookbooks, uh, Momofuku by David Chang. So this book, um, first time I actually read it was when I was stodging at a Taylor's Kitchen. Um, we did a couple recipes out of here, but um, you know, this is how I was introduced to David Chang before, you know, he was huge on TV and stuff like that. But uh, it actually helped spark my interest in ramen and a lot of different, um, you know, like Asian foods and cuisines and stuff like that. Um, but it's really interesting to see David Chang's approach with food um, and kind of what he feels his strengths are and why he does what he does pretty much. But it's a great book um, to, to have a unique approach to Asian cuisine. Um, and it's just really fun. Um, next, uh, we got Charcuterie, The Craft of Salting and Smoking and Curing. Uh, so this one uh, is by Michael Ruhlman and Brian Polson, forward by Thomas Keller. So this is almost like a textbook for me. Um, obviously, I work at a smokehouse. We deal with a lot of proteins. Uh, we deal with, we, you know, we make our own hot links in house. So we deal with charcuterie. Um, I learned out of this book, for all things sausage, um, my, my first chef, Rob Rossi, um, introduced me to this book and, um, anytime I have, you know, technique questions, first time I'm doing some type of sausage, um, or if I just need to brush up on, um, you know, my knowledge, this is the book I'm definitely opening up. Um, it has a wide range of different security sausages, you know, uh, dried meats. It's a, it's a plethora knowledge and uh, it's a go-to for me for all things uh, charcuterie. Then we have the Bible Franklin Barbecue by the uh, magnanimous Mr. Franklin down in Houston. So obviously pretty straightforward why I use this. Um, Franklin is a huge inspiration for me. I got the honor of going down um, and eating with one of our owners, Rob, um, down at Franklin's Barbecue. Uh, the way he breaks this down, this is one of the more unique approaches to a cookbook. Um, and it also just shows how his mind worked and his attention to detail and why all he does is barbecue and why it's so good. Uh, he starts from, you know, from airflow to fire, how to build a fire, you know, how to build a smoker, uh, what wood does, what different woods do, um, you know, from top to bottom, he breaks it down in a scientific way. And then when you get to the back of the book, you finally learn about the food or the smoked meats and all that kind of stuff. But you have to go through almost more than half of the book before you even get to start talking about food or final products and stuff like that. Um, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of the scientific side of smoking. And I had already been smoking, but it taught me why things were happening, how to be able to adjust and uh, and just to understand it, you know, at a, at a molecular level, I'll say. Lastly, arguably my favorite cookbook, um, as you can see, I've worn the cover off of the spine. Uh, this is Heritage by Sean Brock. Um, the reason why this is so big to me, so um, if, you, if you've if you been following me for a while, um, I did a pop-up a long time ago at Pangea Beer Cafe, um, and a lot of the inspiration came from this book, um, Heritage. Um, I've been following Sean Brock for a very long time. I got introduced to him, I think, through... Um, I think it was No Reservations when Anthony Bourdain did, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, it was an episode pretty much where uh, Sean Brock and a bunch of different cooks got invited to Japan and they did like a super dope dinner. But what really intrigued me was when I started doing research into Sean Brock and what he was doing with Southern Cuisine. Um, and 
he looks almost as like Air Franklin looks at barbecue with a very like scientific um, and scientific method approach. Whereas I feel like Sean Brock comes as uh, almost an archeologist and like a historical approach to Southern cuisine. Um, he comes from the Appalachians, which is a very like, you know, uh, specific part of, uh, of Southern cuisine. Um, but he traces Southern food all the way back to its roots back into the African coast. Um, and uh, it's very enlightening. Um, it's definitely more fine dining, but a lot of the recipes, um, especially like the pickles and the condiments and sauces and stuff like that can be applied um, just in everyday, you know, everyday food. Um, but his also his approach and how he's, you know, saving heirloom plants and things of that nature um, and how he's going about that is amazing. Um, his new book South is also super dope. Um, but I use a lot of reference for inspiration and um, just research um, and reference with this book. So that's my top five. Um, I got plenty more books to share um, with a lot more information. It's important for me to read. It's important, you know, this is how I learned. You know, like I said, I didn't I didn't go through, I didn't finish culinary school or anything like that. So this is my source of knowledge. Um, and just like reading anything else, it's, it's fun, it's inspirational, helps you escape, um, and it helps you grow.